My guest today is Godfrey Nolan. Godfrey, how are you, sir? Pretty good, David. How are you? I'm doing great. I um, wanted to talk to you about drones because I know you gave a, a, a session on the drone SDKs at CodeMash, and I know that you uh, that you have a lot of clients that are interested in working with drones from a software's perspective. Yeah, I was pretty pleased about the way CodeMash went. Um, there was it was quite a good crowd and quite a receptive crowd. Uh, basically, what we do is we are mobile developers. Uh -huh. So, um, but we kind of specialized over the last few years in drones. So, long time ago, probably about five years ago, even more, um, we were doing some work uh, on drones, and I realized that drones had an SDK. Um, uh -huh. So, typically, what we do is we choose three things every quarter, just throw them at the wall and see what sticks, and the drone one really stuck. Um, so we've been, we work for lots of different companies. Um, and basically what they, what we do is we are a services company. So we build their mobile apps for drones. So they want to have, they want to fly a drone and they may have a different, um, workflow where they don't want to use the manufacturer's app, like the DJI app or the Parrot app, the Parrot in-flight app. Mm -hmm. So they want to have um, companies out there such as Skyward, Measure, Mapware, lots of other ones. Um, drone deploy, they basically sell uh, you an app so that you can do lots of different things with drones. So what we do is we help them build the mobile apps to um, to create whatever their vision is. What uh, the vision is it mostly around uh, the cameras on the drones picking? Yeah, up there's a lot of stuff happening at the moment, like with live streaming. So we do stuff with. Um, I, I'm I'm saying at the moment that we're kind of like at the level one of what's going to happen in drones. So we're doing things like capturing the images, um, putting, uh, the, sending the images back up to a, you know, to the cloud somewhere where somebody can stitch the images and give you the 2D or 3D ortho of what the, uh, the image is going to look like. Okay. Um, sometimes people are, you know, flying drones, uh, and other people want to see what the output is so that we can live stream the drone so that it can send it back to, um, you know, a third party so they can see what the other person who's flying the drones can see. And then sometimes, we uh, somebody asks us to um, create an app that flies flies over a field, and um, you know just stitches it together so that they can post process it or put a you know a infrared filter on it so that they can um, see you know how everything's growing. Um, mm -hmm. But what okay. I think is really interesting is what I believe is going to happen next, which is uh what are you going to do with machine learning and drones? Because I think that's really where the where the um, the rubber hits the road. I think that's really where stuff is going to happen. So we'll be able to automate a lot of the tasks that are really boring now. Um, so uh, one of the apps that we did three or four years ago now, just to see if we could figure out how to do it, was we put TensorFlow together with the drone SDK on a mobile app. And then in real time, we counted the number of sheep, and then we counted the number of cows. We did that too as well. Uh -huh. And then um, you send that back up to the cloud, and then you use OpenCV or Open Drone Map to um, uh, stitch the images all together, and then you get the total count. Are you so running, we do that a uh, lot now. Are That's you running solid. TensorFlow on the mobile device, or yeah, are you running it in the cloud? No, uh, well, both really. But um, for the real-time stuff, TensorFlow Lite um, works really good on phones. Like all the modern phones will run it. So you can see, like it will take snapshots, images of the different images, and um, it will count. Uh, count the the cattle um one of the things that we do with the interns when we start to train them is um as we put the stuff together it's pretty hard to uh find um lots of uh friendly farmers who let you fly on their farm all the time to train all these <laughs> interns so usually what we do is we just get them to count the number of cars in a parking lot okay so that's really easy you know everybody's got a um <clears throat> you know every university every office kind of has a parking lot you go at the back and then take some videos and then um uh, you use mach the standard machine learning, label all the images with the cars, and then um, train the TensorFlow model. And then at the other end, you get a TensorFlow light. Um, you put that onto the phone. Uh, you present it with the video that's coming um, from the DJI SDK, because uh, that's what the SDK does. It basically allows you to control the drone, do all sorts of fun stuff with it. It's like a 
it's like a headless manufacturer's app. You can do almost everything you can do with uh, with the manufacturer's app. Um, you can do with the SDK if you can oh. code oh, in yeah. Kotlin or Swift. I actually have a DJI right here. The DJI Mini. Yeah, that's the, the Mini. Yeah, that's the uh, the that's the barrier to entry. That's the entry level model that you would need to start doing um, drone SDKs. Yeah, uh, and I have of course the app on here that I, I don't have anything custom on it, but I've just run the app that lets me use the controller and fly it around. Um, but uh, but you're you're capturing information. You're you're doing something more. Yep. The reason the reason you want some customization is to maybe stream that somewhere else. Maybe push it to the cloud yep. in real time. Maybe you want to fly it along um, utility poles and uh, run some TensorFlow to see where. You know, there's too many trees in the way so that you can tell right. people that, uh, hey, it's time to go out and cut the trees down. You know, we're famous for that in Michigan for having storms, which, you know, 300, 400,000 people go out. So, you know, it's uh, it's great if you can get a drone to just fly along the um, uh, the wires between the utility poles and just um, very simply tell people, hey, there's an issue here. There's too many trees here. You want to come out and cut them. All yeah, sorts of things. It's I actually, my, a friend of mine, uh, his first job out of college was mm -hmm. driving around and looking at uh, the trees and seeing where they touched a line or electrical line or where they're yep. about to touch electrical line. That was, it was the most boring job. Yeah, the well, there you go. You, that you, hit the nail on the head. you hit the nail <laughs> on the head right there. Basically what we're trying to do is all those boring jobs, you want to automate them. You know, if you, if there's a ton of containers in a port, you want a drone to be able to fly out, to be able to um, read the text off the side of it so that, you know, you don't have to go out in the snowy weather. If, um, I talked to somebody the other day who's got a uh, who's got a drone that flies. Um, it's not really for residential, although I wanted to use it for residential. But it's like it's a commercial application which just detects if there's people in the area. Mm -hmm. um, so you know if somebody's trying to break in, or if you're um, yeah. just trying to make sure that um, you know your security is in place. It's uh, that's pretty cool too as well. So it'll do that automated. It'll fly and then notify you if uh, if uh, if there's somebody there that shouldn't be there. Boring jobs little, that we want to get rid of, basically. Right, yeah. Tell me a little about the uh, the developer experience. Uh, what's What does this SDK look like, and how do they use it in uh, Kotlin app, for example? Well, it's it's just another library. So basically, with Kotlin, it's fired up Android Studio. Um, you add the libraries uh, to the Gradle file, um, and you're off to the races. So there are a bunch of um, examples out there where you could, you know, there's probably about a dozen examples that DJI did. They're in Java. We've converted them to Kotlin. Right. Um, so uh, if people want to use Kotlin, we have um, a good eight or 10 that you can do. And then uh, the drone that you have doesn't do all of the examples That's because the, as the it'll do the, the basic ones like the first person viewer, the camera, the media manager, all that sort of stuff. But um, a lot of the... What you want to do with the automated flights, it's a little bit harder to do with the smaller drones. But as you start using a Mavic Pro, um, or on the Pirate side as well, the Pirate and Affi. But basically, to answer your question, it's you fire up Android Studio, you add it like any other li other library. You fire up Xcode, um, you know it's a pod install, and off you go. Um, and then Windows, it's a, it's just a, there's a Windows SDK for DJI. I think that's that one and um, the custom ones, the Q ground control ones. I think they're the only ones that do Windows at the moment. Hmm. And uh, so DJI, DJI is one vendor. Every vendor has an SDK that works Not more or less the same vendor. way? Great question. Not every vendor does. So most vendors do. But if you want to do this, you want to make sure that it's one of the vendors that has an SDK. So if you, uh, DJI is the biggest in the market. They have an SDK hmm. that works with iOS and Android and Windows. Um, Parrot have one that works with uh, iOS and uh, Android, and then they give away a lot of the code. So a lot of them will give you give away icons or code, so you don't have to um, do all that stuff as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's just drag and drop to make sure that everything works. Um, if you want to do open source, like if you want to do something on the Pixhawk controller, um, there's QGC that you can use, um, or you can write stuff directly using what's known Mavlink. That's the protocol that communicates. The only one that doesn't have it at the moment is Skydio. So Skydio is um, becoming one of the big drones. Um, that doesn't have an SDK. I'm hoping they do sometime um, this year or next year. They did in the past, so finger, fingers crossed they'll get one. And then Autel mm -hmm. or another um, Chinese manufacturer like DJI, they have a, an SDK too as well, So um, which, is, uh, which works pretty similar to the way the DJI one works. So you're seeing a lot of demand in this space for this these kinds of applications. Yep. We are um, 
we're finding that probably about 75 percent 80 percent of our work now is drones um, oh my gosh yeah a lot in the in the past it was you know um it's not really the machine learning yet we have some of that we're doing a uh a, an app that detects weeds so we're doing that um for a group in virginia um mm. which is great that's really good fun um but that's pretty small scale stuff hopefully it'll get bigger Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, the, most of the stuff, like we've worked with all the companies they expect in Southeast Michigan in the past, you know, the Dominoes, the Whirlpools, the Blue Cross Blue Shields, but all the stuff that's coming in now uh-huh. um, is drones. You want yeah. to detect uh, whether there's enough pepperoni on the pizza before <laughs> it gets delivered. Here's your, yeah, here's your guy well, right here. Well, hey, drone <laughs> delivery. There's another one. There's a lot of people talk about drone delivery. Although uh, I the, don't Amazon think... promised to me that and it never happened. That's where I got started because I saw Amazon um, talking on uh, on 60 Minutes back in the day saying that we were going to have Amazon um, sending, out, <laughs> sending out. Sorry, it's my dog. Sending out uh, everybody. Would you sit? <laughs> Come on. Mailman. Squirrel in the yard. No, that's the mailman. Um, that time of day. But yeah, uh, so Bezos was on 60 Minutes and I saw uh, he said he was going to get all this stuff going. Um, but the problem is, is this regulation. So like, you know, if you have a drone that's um, delivering a pizza, you know, uh, kids with a soccer ball are going to um, kick it if they know that's the one. We had somebody who was asking us to d- build a rover, so like a drone that doesn't fly. Um, and they wanted to do deliver weed. I was like, yeah, I can see that's that's going to be a real problem. So, you know, sending your cannabis around in a rover with a big, you know, marijuana leaf on the side. You know, that's not going to work. So yeah, there there are issues, but the regulation issues with uh, drone delivery is is going to be a problem because you're not allowed to fly the drone beyond um, what's known BVLOS beyond visual line of sight. So right. um, you'd basically have to be stop standing on top of the uh you know the pizza shop and then um pizza store and then be looking at the drone as it flies to wherever the customers are which kind of defeats the whole purpose of automating the delivery you know it'll change (laughs) um there's a guy uh in ireland who went to my school who um is uh who's uh, he's called mana delivery he's doing a uh, a lot of drone delivery in ireland um so you know it'll come it's just the regulations we just have to catch up with the technology are you encountering any regulations that are getting in the way of the the projects you want to do um I, not really there's uh, a lot of the work we do some of the work we do is the when you're flying a drone if you especially if you're flying it in an urban area you have to make sure that um you're five miles away from uh, from an airport, and if you're not, mm. then you have to get an okay from the FAA. And there's a thing called Lance L A A N C, which uh, basically allows you to um, uh, get that okay without having to call the you know the airport tower. Mm. Um, so the um, you know we've done a lot of work, which is you know calling the APIs to for different customers to make sure that they can um, the user experience is really easy. If somebody needs to fly and they need to get an authorization. They can re- get it from the same mobile app without having to go onto the web or do anything. Oh, else. interesting. So, so you've incorporated those APIs to yeah, actually it's... ask for permission yep. and in near real time. Yep. And um, the, with the idea being is that you basically want to make sure that uh, whoever is flying, um, that they have the least amount of interruptions as possible. So like back in the old days, um, you know, you, if you wanted to take videos off your drone, you'd have to take out the mini SD card and put it into a you know, a, a laptop and upload that to the, um, to the, to the cloud somewhere. Basically what we're trying to do is just streamline all of that stuff. So it makes it as easy as possible and as quick as possible so that, um, people can do more flying and, um, do more work. It sounds like fun projects you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting, um, like it's, uh, it's much easier to recruit for these type of projects. So, um, there's, uh, I'm still hard because there's, you know, still lots of people out there looking for good developers. Don't get me wrong, but it's definitely, um, it gives us a bit of a leg up. And also interns, it's really good. It's really easy to um, convince the students because we, we take in a lot of interns and, um, you know, get them for two or three years and convert them to employees. So it's, uh, it's pretty easy to, you see the light go off in the eye when you start talking about drones. It's great. Well, mention your company because maybe somebody yep. who watched this video want to come work for you. Yeah, the name of the company is Reese, so it stands for Research Internet Systems. We've been around since 1998. We're about 60 people, um, headquartered in Troy, Michigan, and then we also have uh, we have a Reese Canada now, which I started oh. um, last year. Same Where's thing again, recruiting. In Windsor. It's in Windsor, but really it's all remote at the moment. We have. Um, oh. 
we have a couple of guys in Toronto and we have three interns in Windsor from the University of Windsor. But, you know, sooner or later, we'll get a get somewhere in Windsor, I'm thinking. Is that for legal reasons for to to get work in Canada? Is that the idea? Uh, no, not really. It's they all of the people in Canada are, are working for Reese now, Reese um, US. Okay. It's really just for recruiting. So we're trying to find people ah, wherever we can. Um, just to if expand my Spanish, your recruiting base. If my Spanish was better, I'd do it in Mexico. You know? <laughs> Excellent. Maybe we'll do that next. Maybe that's what's coming. Why not? Uh, you could fl go fly down there and fly some drones around. Yeah. yeah. Cabo San Luca. Yeah. But most of the stuff we do is, um, you know, vast majority of people, it's it's all US based. Right. Uh, is there anything we haven't covered that's essential? Um, well, I just, uh, the other thing, I guess, is I started a drone meetup group. So one of the things that I well, found yeah. was I was really trying to um, find a place for lots of people to get together to do this. So there's two big conferences. There's AUVSI, Exponential, and Commercial UAV. But both of them are kind of like uh, B2B conferences. Um, and there are some pilots there, but there's not really many developers there. So I started mm -hmm. a drone meetup group, a, a, you know, 100% virtual meetup group, which basically... Um, I'm trying to get people to get, get together. So I did the first one, which was an overview. So, and I recorded it. That's up if somebody wants to see it on meetup.com. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is about, um, the, the 12 examples, tutorials that we converted to Kotlin. And then mm -hmm. somebody from DJI is actually going to talk about the, um, the iOS one. So we have somebody, uh, our first guest speaker is, um, Grant Hostiger, who's going to talk in, uh, uh, probably about six weeks on the iOS examples that we did. We converted the ones up online or Objective-C. It's not really as many Objective-C developers around these days. So we converted them mm. to Swift. He did some of the beta testing and he was kind enough to um, uh, say that he'd walk through the tutorial. So so after that, I think we'll probably um, do some of the machine learning. So I think that I really, I'm really excited about the machine learning and how I think that's going to take off. You gotta watch it as well. There's too many puns when you start talking about drones. <laughs> To give me yeah. a give me a drone pun. Oh no, this one isn't going to fly. No, not at all. You know, it just goes on and on. <laughs> I get <you> it. <laughs> I have to stop. I have to stop myself. They're really lame. But hey, I'm a dad, so you know, it comes with the territory. <laughs> Dad jokes. Yeah. Godfrey, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and, and I always learn something new when I talk to you. You too, David. Thanks again. So during COVID, I reconnected to all my childhood friends using the wonders of modern technology. And 100 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I'm very happy.